Hello, and welcome back to Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped with me, Matthew Caddies, a.k.a. Poogie. And yes, I'm going to say that at the beginning of most episodes, unless it does my thwarting. Anyway, we are going to finish off the first walkthrough in the game and um, indeed go to the um, Making Waves level. The first of the jet ski levels. So, yeah, which has been slowed down a tad for. The insane trilogy. It's still fun, but you know, the jumps in particular aren't as fun with the, the thing. It's still very explosive, is the um, jet ski, if it gets close to anything, if you don't have an Aku Aku mask. But it moves on, I think, in game at least, a lot slower from what I've seen. But other than that, it's still fun to control. So yeah, um, so in the jet ski levels, the main thing to watch out for are the various obstacles, such as the bombs, and in later levels, in, um, they get really annoying. The pirate ships that are shooting cannonballs at you, and the sharks, of course, that are um, lurking in the water, again, that will chew you up. Uh, the cannonballs from the pirate ships go in a certain order, so yeah, and there are also pirates. Um, um, going about in their um, and getting growing boats. So yeah, and they will hit you with their oars if you're not careful. And the cannonballs can e easily reach as far as these uh, crates here. Which also isn't fun. So yeah. So uh, all in all, yeah. You saw there one of the reasons why I don't like these levels as much in the um, in this level. The jumps just don't always work. Again, I did have trouble pivoting Coco in the original uh, Crash Bandicoot 3, but yeah. And you will see there, there was a seagull. Yes, that seagull is very annoying because what it can do is uh, perch itself on top of one of the, um, um, one of the boxes and easily troll you. Uh, so you have to wait until it flies off in order to get whatever is inside the box. Usually Wumpa Fruit, but um, can sometimes be a Wumpa Fruit. Usually it's a Wumpa Fruit. So yeah. This level is fairly easy to get um, um, all the boxes for the box gem. It isn't always this in this case, but it is in this one. So yeah. So let's turn you around there, Coco. Let's see, I'm not sure if I'm facing the right way there, but never mind. I already hit a checkpoint, so that's fine. Yeah, that is fine. I'm not going to edit too much out of this episode because it's already short enough. And, um, yeah. The music for what it's worth is so fun. And, um, if anything, it does lack a few of the instruments from the original, but um, I do like, as I say, Crash 3's level themes a lot more than what happened with Crash 2's levels. I'm looking at the, especially the uh, sewer levels in Crash 2, which I did not like, seriously. So with that said, let's get you over here, and please ignore the thing that was a glitch with my um, controller where apparently I uh, the, the, thought it was a headset. Again, that has happened with a good number of my PS4 Let's Plays. So yeah, anyway... Both the, um, um, there's uh, the, um, crystal and the gem for making waves, so I don't need to worry about that. So, yeah, um, I will go over the time trial a little later on. Um, anyway, that being said, we are going to face our first boss now, Tiny Tiger. So yeah, maybe not um, Cortex, no, I'm sorry, maybe not Tiny himself, but certainly the creatures he keeps company with in this fight, because apparently we are now in ancient Rome, and we are facing Tiny, and he is now a gladiator. So yeah. Thankfully, unlike in Crash 2, we don't have to deal with, it's not a game of hop, skip, and jump this time, it is just a game of evading Tiny and his uh, spear, and once he gets it stuck in the ground, um, yeah, 
is it, is it, Tani himself is a lot easier. However, um, when you damage him, you have to deal with the lions. And they can be annoying to deal with, even in Ensign Trilogy. Um, even though they move a lot slower than in the original Crash 3. So, yeah, that's what I mean about it being tougher in that regard. But he has less health because he is the first boss, of course, is Tiny. So, yeah. And he worries. Sometimes, they, um, sometimes the lions can come out in pairs. Obviously, uh, in this case, the lions, uh, unlike in the original game, do not come one straight after another, which is very, very different. Seriously, so if anything, Tiny might actually be easier. But he wasn't so in the. It's only with the lions, anyway. That easily. Anyway, we get our first upgrade in the game the supercharged body slam. I will, and it allows you to, well, do a most powerful body slam. Well done, children. By defeating Tiny, you have unlocked the gate to the next time travel area. Go back to the center of this time twister and save your progress if you wish. From there you will see that the gate to the second time travel area is now open. Oh uh, yeah, um, that's what happens when you beat a boss. And yes, there are upgrades for each area of the game. Um, and we will also now get a new crate in game as well. Um, when we go to, well, one of the levels. I don't know which one yet, but the first one I will tackle is the second medieval level, G Wiz. Why? Why must you continue to be a thorn in our side? Who? What? Where was I? Oh, Tiny was a good fellow. He hated everyone and everything, but a good heart nonetheless. Please be more reasonable with my minions next time. Seems um, Uka Uka and Cortex may be getting closer to one another, it seems. Anyway, this is um, G-Wiz. Uh, so named because this will introduce us to the wizard enemies in the air. And they are... Um, oh, before I go on, meet the uh, Steel Craze. They can only be destroyed with the superpowered body slam by pressing the X button and the circle button while in midair. Uh, that can that will get rid of them. Anyway, here's the aforementioned wizard, and you will note that in Ensign Trilogy, uh, um, you will actually spin it straight into them, and they're automatically defeated. In the original PS1 release of Crash um, Bandicoot 3. Um, that did not happen. Oh no, you had to. He actually took two hits to actually be beaten because uh, what happens is in uh, the original PS1 release is that the wizard actually loses his robes and pretty much continues to blast you with magic um, while in his underpants. Seriously, I'm guessing the ESRB um, had a say in that, I guess. So. They wanted to keep the game kid friendly in the 2010s, or indeed uh, the 2020s as it is now. But this game was released in 2017, oh, so um, yeah. So anyway, the other thing, oh, I've already mentioned the knives, but yeah. Um, if you do get hit by your magic without a um, an Aku Aku mask, what will happen is that Crash will turn into a frog. And that does still happen in NC Trilogy, that, that death is left in. So yeah, um, as with the knights here with their swords, oh boy, he went flying! His, his, his sword just went right up there! That is very cartoony. Okay, that makes up somewhat for the um, um, wizard not being pants, as it were, or, or de-robed at least, maybe not pants. Uh, yes, I watched a lot of cow and chicken, and I am weasel. The late 90s. Anyway, that being said, let's go up here and indeed get more thing. Yeah, apparently edginess is not um, in the sense of the late 90s cartoon and the uh, gross out humor is not a thing anymore in certainly Activision's video gaming. Oh well, let's go to the um, bonus stage and now we will see there are a bunch of invisible blocks and this will introduce us to the exclamation blocks. 
Of course, they have been a thing in Crash 1 and 2, and they are still a thing in Crash 3. So what you have to do in order to make the invisible blocks appear is that um, you will have to, um, well, get the blocks that way. So yeah, um, and thankfully, um, um, on, although having said that, I messed this up royally because there you will see I am missing one box that is under the hit now. Uh, visible blocks. So what I have to do is um, basically to get that box is not hit the exclamation boxes um, while he and did that frog just jump into the nitro? It totally did. He jumped into the nitro. I've never seen that happen before. But yeah, weird AI. But anyway, yeah, I have to jump on that box to suspend it under the invisible blocks before hitting the exclamation box. Not too hard, but, um, yeah, we will get an item that we could get a little later, but, as I say, you can actually get the box gem this early in game without it. So, yeah, um, no oh boy, yeah, um, but that being said, I'm going to ignore the, um, exclamation box to get the box there, there we go, yeah, that's the easy way. Is indeed the easy way, and we've got all 18 boxes in the bonus round. Yes, you don't really need the item you will get. I think it's quite late in the game you get the item that really breaks the game, in my humble opinion. But um, yeah, I'll go over that when we get it. So yeah, uh, I do like the uh, medieval stages. To be fair. In Thing. Another thing to note, you can walk along the side of the area to avoid the enemies as well. Uh, though it doesn't always work because there isn't always wall. So yeah, it works a lot better than the um, let's say the bridges in um, yeah, let's say um, Road to Nowhere and uh, the High Road. Anyway, that being said, we have got the gem for G Wiz. So we will continue through the second warp room in the Time Twister in the next episode. So until then, I will see you later. Goodbye!